Currently worth just over $3 billion, the real estate mogul and television star who found a third career as President of the United States can afford just about anything he wants. And he has no problem showcasing that ability to everyone around him. Aside from his documented love of cheap fast food, there isn't much Donald Trump purchases that the average person could afford. Here now are the big questions. Here are the most incredible things the president spends his billions on. So many cars. Like many rich people, Donald Trump has an exquisite car collection. His might be among the most impressive around, though more for quality rather than quantity. Trump doesn't collect dozens of cars, but what he does own are some of the most expensive, most powerful, and highest quality luxury vehicles ever made. He owns a 2003 Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, which ran over $445,000 upon release. He also keeps a 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT, a Mercedes Maybach S600, a Tesla Roadster, and a 2016 Cadillac Escalade. In addition, he keeps a 2015 Rolls-Royce Phantom around. This vehicle starts at $500,000 and is fully customizable. Who knows how much Trump spent to make the interior as lush and golden as he likes everything else. Then there's his 2011 Chevrolet Camaro Indianapolis 500 pace car, which was a legitimate pace car that he was apparently supposed to drive in the 2011 Indy 500 until scheduling issues made that impossible. Finally, there's his 1956 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud, which is technically a replica. This was one of Trump's first cars, and he fell in love with it so much he eventually paid Rolls-Royce to make him a new one just like it. The offer was clearly enticing enough that the company happily agreed. 17 Golf Clubs As he's shown many times over the past few years, Donald Trump loves the game of golf. He's been investing in the sport since 1999 when he first purchased his first club, but he certainly didn't stop at one. Currently, the president owns not one, not two, but 17 different golf courses around the world. Many of his clubs were properties he snatched up after the Great Recession of 2008. Even still, he spent hundreds of millions of dollars simply on buying all these properties, never mind renovating them and turning into worthy showcases of both his brand and his favorite pastime. Take the Trump National Golf Club in Los Angeles. Trump paid $27 million to buy the course from its former owners. After a landslide sunk the 18th hole and forced the club into bankruptcy, Trump and his organization have since spent over $260 million renovating and updating it, making it the single most expensive golf course in history. Though most of Trump's golf properties are based in the US, he also owns several courses in Ireland, Scotland, and Dubai. Once he leaves office, there's no reason to think he won't seek to add even more courses, possibly in more countries, to his repertoire. That way he can golf on his own course literally anywhere. $100 million private airplane. If Trump ever feels like a luxury helicopter is too cramped, he's always got his luxury private jet to play around in. His personal Boeing 757 is among the most valuable and most powerful private planes on the earth. Trump purchased the Boeing, which had been built in 2011, for an incredible $100 million. That alone makes the jet now formally dubbed Trump Force One, the eighth most expensive plane in the world. It's likely worth even more now that its owner has upgraded it so much. Inside, you'll find a lounge, bedrooms, a dining room, a guest room, and Trump's own personal master bedroom. Inside the master bedroom is a private cinematic entertainment system and a private bathroom. That bathroom, as befitting Trump, sports a sink with a 24 karat gold interior. But don't feel left out yet if you can't use that sink. Just about everything on the plane that can be is plated in gold. The plane itself is a technical marvel, featuring a state-of-the-art computerized glass cockpit and boasting two Rolls-Royce engines that can propel Trump Force One to speeds exceeding 500 miles an hour. It's no wonder Trump didn't exactly want to park it in favor of the official Air Force One upon taking office, but that's exactly what he had to do. As the presidential plane has actual security measures and access to military operational secrets and procedures, he'll just have to wait until the job is done to fly his beloved Trump Force One again. Three helicopters. Lots of rich people own helicopters. Trump, meanwhile, reportedly has three. Mostly because he's, well, Trump. 
To be fair, we've only seen two of them, and considering how much Trump likes to show off his wealth, it's rather curious he doesn't show off all of his whirly birds. But he's certainly wealthy enough to own more than one chopper if he likes. The second helicopter isn't technically his. Well, not permanently anyway. That would be Marine One, the official White House helicopter. That, due to security reasons, is the only chopper he's allowed in while he's president. That'll be just one of the many perks he can look forward to after returning to his private life. The ability to fly in his other most famous chopper. In 2011, he bought a used Sikorsky S-76 copter, spending upwards of $7 million to acquire it. But the ride wasn't, to coin a phrase, Trumpy enough for the Trump. So he reportedly spent an extra $750,000 so famous New York aircraft designer Eric Roth could make the copter worthy of its owner's name. The mission was most certainly accomplished, as the Sikorsky, now with the name Trump spelt outside in giant lettering, is pure helicopter luxury. Almost everything inside, from the seats to the pillows, are either colored or covered in gold. Much of the wooden surfaces have the Trump family crest painted on it, in gold of course. Even the seatbelts are gold, because Donald Trump is nothing if not dedicated to stamping his personality onto everything he owns. Gold everything. We can't proceed any further into an article about Donald Trump without mentioning what he seemingly loves most of all. Gold. Perhaps the ultimate symbol of luxury and a well-off life, Trump prefers as much of his world be adorned in gold as possible. From gold-rimmed cups and plates to gold-plated sinks in his private planes. Trump's world is only slightly less covered in gold than King Midas's. The furniture, blankets, and curtains in his jets and homes are even laced with gold. This even applies at his new job, where he's replaced the curtains in the Oval Office with gold-colored and gold-rimmed curtains. If he thought he could hit a golf ball accurately with gold-plated golf clubs, <laughs> he probably would. And because this is Donald Trump, his gold possessions aren't just colored that way. Whenever possible, he uses genuine 24 karat gold to turn his world into a monument to his wealth. His love of the shiny metal is so far-reaching, he'd love to officially make it how the United States makes and spends its money. The US abandoned the gold standard in 1973, but Trump has made several comments since announcing his campaign for president about how he would return to that standard. Whether that happens or not, it's clear that Trump will continue to adhere to his own personal gold standard for the rest of his days. Real Estate Forget the politics, and The Apprentice's Donald Trump is first and foremost a real estate guy. He's been active in the industry since joining his father's company in the 1960s. It's where he made his billions and where he likely will continue to do so after leaving office. Currently, Trump invests in properties all over the world, outside of the US, Buildings in Canada, India, the Philippines, South Korea, Turkey, and Uruguay all bear his name and fingerprints. In the United States, Trump owns buildings in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Illinois, Florida, Hawaii, and Nevada. It's difficult to say how much money he's invested over the decades, but considering his specialty is high-class luxury apartment life, it's safe to say he's spent hundreds of millions, if not billions, between buying, selling, and investing in all of these properties. Trump currently isn't active in real estate due to all the duties that come with running a humongous country, but it must be comforting to know that once his political career ends, he'll definitely have something lucrative to fall back on. The Trump Winery Despite being a teetotaler who claims to have never even sipped alcohol in his life, Donald Trump owns a humongous winery. Clearly, he's not his own best customer. In 2011, Trump purchased Charlottesville, Virginia's Cluj Estate Winery and Vineyard, which was at risk of foreclosure. He ultimately paid just over $3.5 million for the estate, through methods one could describe as both creative and shady. According to Bank of America, who had paid $16 million for the property's mansion at a foreclosure auction, Trump first purchased acres of land around the estate, then arranged for it to intentionally look closed off and raggedy. This move alleges Bank of America made other potential buyers shy away from making an offer, as they thought the property was either wrecked beyond repair or exclusively owned by Trump. Thus, without any other options, the bank took a bath and accepted Trump's offer. Whatever you think of this method, it was clearly worth it, as the former Cluj winery is currently valued at over $25 million. Since renaming it after, who else, himself, Trump's revamped it to be much more than a winery. 
It's got a clubhouse, a hotel, it can host weddings and corporate events, and it's crafted several high-scoring and award-winning vintages. GOAT, a tribute to Muhammad Ali. Not everything Donald Trump spends his money on is gold-plated and super flashy. Sometimes what he purchases has legitimate sentimental value, such as his signed copy of a Muhammad Ali tribute book. The fact that its cover is almost entirely gold is merely a bonus. Trump has long been a huge fan of the boxing legend, even tweeting after Ali's passing about how he was truly a great champion and a wonderful guy. So it makes sense that he would pay top dollar for the book GOAT, a tribute to Muhammad Ali. Of course, everyone who owns this book did. Only 1,000 copies ever made it into circulation. But not only was each one signed by the greatest, each copy cost around $15,000. For Trump, it was money easily spent and well spent. A gold-plated motorcycle. Donald Trump isn't one to ride motorcycles, but he's most definitely one to own one. But being who he is, he couldn't just buy a regular expensive motorcycle and call it a day. No. He had to find a way to adorn it with as much gold, if not more, than his usual insane purchases. In 2012, Trump visited the set of American Chopper, and the show's stars agreed to customize a special motorcycle just for the future president. It was pure Trump, with gold plating and lining everywhere. The tank was gold, the handlebars were gold, and even the wheels were gold. The Trump name made it right onto the pedal and the engine. But what good is having a chopper like this made just for you if even one person doesn't know it's for you? We don't know exactly how much Trump paid for this commission or how much it's worth, only that it can't possibly be less than tons. We do know, however, that Trump heartily approved of the project and isn't making the customer happy what really counts. Trump Tower By 1995, Donald Trump had a ton to his name. So why not spend the money to add not just one more thing, but THE one more thing? He did just that by purchasing a 71-story building at 40 Wall Street in New York City, renaming it, naturally, the Trump Building. The total cost, $10 million. The total value, damn near priceless. This building has a storied history that long predates Trump. It was built in the late 1920s as part of the so-called Race to the Sky, a competition between several NYC fat cats to see who could build the world's tallest habitable building. The 927-foot Trump Building, then known as the Manhattan Company Building, actually won the race briefly, until a month later when the nearby Chrysler Building added a giant spire to surpass it at 1,046 feet. The Manhattan Company called shenanigans since spires aren't exactly livable. But less than a year later, the 1,250-foot Empire State Building showed up and claimed the tallest title outright. By the time Trump showed up, the building was in bad shape, having been neglected for years after a shadowy 1982 deal brokered by Filipino President Ferdinand Marcos fell through. Trump purchased the lease in 1995 for $10 million, though he's since claimed he only spent $1 million. Either way, it's clearly been a sound investment, as experts currently peg the building's worth at over a billion dollars, making it Trump's most valuable building by far. Not bad for a place that was just shy of dilapidation before he swooped in. If you enjoy the gold-plated and luxurious side of life, make sure to check out my channel in the link at the top of the description.